Ruby. Coming up on the show, empowering women through the Woman 2.1 Summit. We meet the man behind it. And would you wear only a bra to raise awareness for breast cancer? We attend the bra party organized by Pixie Dust to do just that. These and many more all on today's episode. And welcome to another episode on the Be Bold Show. It's going to be one exciting one once again. But you know what's special about this episode? It's going to be a woman's world in the sense that we've got a lot of women coming up, a lot of women interviewers coming up. And well, you'll find out more about them. But before we do that, I hope you love what we're wearing. I'm wearing AKE by Kemi. And so am I, of course. Oh, also. Oh, excellent. Yes. All right. And then obviously our makeup's being done by So Aesthetic. So a big thanks to her. Hope you like how we're looking. Definitely. Well, we're just going to jump right into it. Like Crystal said, it is a women's world today on the show. And we will appropriately start with the Leading Ladies Network. So let's have a look at their story. Hi, good. How are you too? Welcome to Leading Ladies. Thank Come you. in. My name is Yawa Hansen Kwao, and I run an organization called the Leading Ladies Network. It's a women's leadership development organization, which I started in 2009. So it takes up most of my time, and what that means is that I am involved in providing leadership skills training um, in areas as diverse as public speaking, uh, career, um, thinking about the future and how to even understand workplace politics and things of that nature. So it, it's work that fulfills me greatly and I'm excited that I get to contribute to Africa's development through it. Right. There are three main programs that Leading Ladies Network is actively engaged in running at the moment. The first is called FLAMES. FLAMES is an acronym for the Female Leadership Advancement Mentoring and Empowerment Series. This is a leadership curriculum, actually, that we've developed, and it focuses on personal development, uh, career advancement, and social entrepreneurship. This we designed particularly for women who fall into the tertiary category, um, who may be enrolled currently in a university or a polytechnic, and the reason why we developed this particular program was to expose women to social entrepreneurship um, as a viable way of you know, employment after school. Um, I'm sure you'll bear with me that graduate unemployment is a big issue here, but you can solve social issues at some sort of profit. So this curriculum is designed to get young women at this age to start thinking maybe not about a career in a big corporation or a company, but think of going back into their communities, identifying social problems, and using that as their long-term careers. And this curriculum requires the beneficiaries to develop a social change project at the end of it. The second program that we've got going on is what we call the Women of Tomorrow. Women of Tomorrow is a workshop seminar series that we take to um, junior high school, senior high school campuses. Um, these are the young women that will one day be leaders of tomorrow. So this is really to expose them, to get them to start thinking about careers. What do they want to do with their lives? We bring in resource people from different industries and different backgrounds to, to talk to them and inspire them. We have coaching sessions and we try to pair them as well with mentors who will keep track on their progress. And that's one of the things that really informed the name Leading Ladies Network because we don't just want to, to have one engagement, but we want to, to create a network of women who can engage with them even after you know, our program is over. So what we have interestingly going on now with the Women of Tomorrow project is that we've got high school girls who are serving as mentors to junior high school girls. And the strength of that connection is also powerful. Um, when a young girl finishes JHS, she's able to uh, have a good sense of what programs she may choose when she goes to high school and she has you know a big sister somewhere who's looking out for her and giving her good advice. The third program that we have and this is really at its beginning stages is what we call the Leading Ladies Roundtable 
we're developing content for media. We want to disseminate this content on media, particularly because we understand that anytime you're dealing with women, you cannot expect that they will always be available to show up physically. And so this is our project to try to develop media content that we can use um, social media as well to disseminate. Um, right now, we're playing around with the idea of disseminating it as 15 to 20 minute video blogs where we're talking about some of the things that we talk about in our sessions or in, in all the other two programs that I've also described. So for instance, a video blog on what, to, what, is, um, what is appropriate to wear, do and say in an interview. Um, so that people can also have a visual on this is work appropriate clothing, this is not. Uh, when you are asked this question, this is what the interviewer is looking for, and this is one good way to, it, to answer it, this is one good way to not answer it, one bad way to answer it. Um, and all of these to just kind of give you know, people the opportunity to engage with us, even if they can't physically show up for some of the work that we do. I want you to think very quickly about anything that you have submitted to memory. It could be a poem, it could be a memory verse, it could be anything. Think about that and deliver it to me as if you're on stage speaking to a grand audience. And this is your audience. So give them that poem, that thing, anything that you have in memory right now. Mary had a little lamb. His feet were white as snow. When I started leading Ladies Network in 2009, it was honestly a leap of faith. I had two things. One, a conviction that women can and should lead and two, that this kind of work is worth my life's commitment. So I started the organization while I was still working for a different company. Um, I started by doing leading ladies seminars every quarter where we would invite corporate women um, to come and share you know, stories about how they made it, um, what they've learned as corporate women, and our target at the time was purely uh, women who were in tertiary institutions, so universities, polytechnics mainly. Um, and the feedback from that was so overwhelming that I saw that what we were doing was really, really meeting a need. And that's when I played with the idea of leaving my job to do it full time. So it's almost a year later in March 2010 that I resigned my job to, to take care of leading ladies full time. My interest in women's issues, I think, really stems from my childhood. Um, I came from a family that was really, really close-knit up until a point where my parents split. So I grew up in formative years of my life without my mother. And it caused me to really, really perhaps interrogate, maybe from an academic sense, some of the issues about women, what causes us to respond to life situations the way we do. Um, in university, I also became very active in HIV AIDS peer education because you, as you may know, the statistics show that AIDS is warping into a women's disease. So I've always been interested in women's issues from that point. But I think the turning point to leadership happened when I became the first female at my university campus to contest and win the presidency of our student council. And it was widely celebrated, widely acclaimed, and I felt good for all of maybe five minutes. But then the reality dawned on me that women should be normalized as leaders. They should not be a big deal. I would much rather have been celebrated for becoming the first female president of the country, not necessarily just a student council. So that's where my focus shifted to leadership. And I began to read more about some of the barriers, some of the things that cause women to be so grossly underrepresented when it comes to especially political leadership um, and business leadership as well. So that really was my turning point and why I decided to focus People on women's may never leadership. Remember what you have said to them, but they will always remember how you made them feel. Yeah. What kind of emotion that you were able to elicit from them? What type of feeling? Because I know it happens to you too. Sometimes you meet a person and you're like, I don't like him. I don't like them. Why? There's just something. So what kind of aura do you bring with yourself as you're speaking? I think the biggest lesson I have learned from starting Leading Ladies Network has been that one person is important, if it's just one person. If you organize a program 
And if it's for one person, one person gets blessed, one person has an epiphany, one person um, feels a bit more confident in themselves because of that, you are a success. If all of the three years that we've spent on this project has been for one person, it's well worth it. My name is Yawa hansen Kwao with the Leading Ladies Network. And my number one piece of advice is if your work affects just one person, do it as if it's a million. And always remember to be bold. The Leading Ladies Network, they're really all about empowering women and seeing what women are doing in society. And I love that because sometimes a lot of people feel like, you know, what are women doing out there? Maybe you can't accomplish certain things. Mm -hmm. And it's really highlighting that and letting you see that there are women out there that are also doing the best that they can in this, in, in this you know, society in Ghana yeah. and so forth. But still on women's empowerment, what does it really mean to empower women? We'll find out more about that when we come back from the break. Still to come, the man behind the Woman 2.1 Summit. After the break. Come on, 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 come on.